Hello from Aswan. We are about to see one of the most characteristic places in Aswan. A beautifully and wonderfully preserved Temple of Isis, located on the island of Philae. Let's go! Philae Island is located at the first cataract between the old Asuan Dam and the Asuan High Dam. The island's current name derives from Greek and means the end. Copts got it Pilak, which translates to remote place, whereas ancient Egyptians refer to it as Palik, the island of the time. location of the temples it's not the original one. The temples on the Philae island were dismantled and relocated in the 1970s, around 500 meters northwest, to Agilikia island, after the construction of the high dam, which resulted in the submerging the original island underwater. You know my focus is on ancient history, so I won't elaborate on this, but I recommend you check this truly interesting story out as there are plenty of sources covering the subject down to the slightest details. From early on, the island was dedicated to the goddess Isis, the mother of all gods. We begin our exploration at the temple of Aden Snufis. It dates back to the 3rd century BC, but was probably built on the remains of an older structure, dedicated to the Nubian god Aden Snufis, about whom there is almost no evidence. Probably his main titles were Companion of Isis and Protector of Osiris. Opposite the temple of Aaron Snopis stands the oldest extant temple structure from the 4th century BC, the kiosk of Nectanebo I. I can't take my eyes off of these amazingly crafted and preserved sistrum columns. Nectanebo was a founder of the 30th dynasty, the last native dynasty of ancient Egypt. Nectanebo also built the main gate, later incorporated into the first pylon. The kiosk is connected to a western colonnade, featuring 32 columns and 12 window-like openings, offering wonderful views of the Nile and neighboring islands. The colonnade was being ornamented during the rule of Augustus, Tiberius, Claudius and Nero. The first mention of Isis occurs in the pyramid texts in the late 5th dynasty. However, the first temple dedicated to her wasn't built until the 6th or the 7th century BC. Isis is a Greek name. The ancient Egyptians called her Aset, meaning Queen of the Throne. Hence, until the New Kingdom she was usually depicted with a throne on her head. But here on Philae, we'll recognize her by the vulture crown, with sand disc between the horns.
but where does she come from? Let's hear one of the versions of the ancient Egyptian myth of creation. At the beginning of time there was nothing but water and darkness. Then the sun god Atum created himself from these primordial waters and spat out his offspring Sun Shu, Dry Air and daughter Tefnut, Moisture. Shu and Tefnut created Sky Nut and Earth, Geb. Geb and Nut engendered the gods, two brothers Osiris, god of order, and Seth, god of chaos, as well as two sisters, Isis and Nephthys. Isis was married to Osiris and Nephthys to Seth. We're looking at the symbol of Philae Island, the Trajan's kiosk, later named the Pharaoh's bed, as it resembles a four-poster bed. The building measures 20 by 15 meters and is almost 16 meters high. It features 14 simple but magnificent columns with floral-inspired capitals and had a timber roof in ancient times. It may not be immediately apparent, but the building has never been completed. Only two screen walls are adorned with reliefs, and the part of the columns both the floral capitals were to be adorned with sistrums, the same as in the Temple of Hathor in Dendera. The interior features dozens of travelers' graffiti from the 18th and 19th centuries. A few, let's say, creators had to go to great lengths to carve such fancy inscriptions. Just take a look at these swirls. It looks as if it was commissioned. The Kiosk of Trajan was probably built as a shelter for the royal boat of Isis. Every 10 days, the bark with an image of Isis was sent to the temple of Osiris on the nearby shore of Bigger Island. Another hypothesis, however, claims that the kiosk served as a rest area during long processions in the summer heat. A large majority of still existing structures was erected during the Ptolemaic period. The Great Temple of Isis in front of us isn't an exception. Its construction was initiated by Ptolemy II Philadelphus around 270 BC and was continued by his successors. The first enormous pylon, measuring 45.5 by 18 meters, displays on its two pyramidal towers a traditional Egyptian scene – the ritual massacre of the unfaithful ones. The pharaoh depicted on both massives is none other than Cleopatra's father, Ptolemy XII. Naturally, the enemies will be sacrificed to their gods – Isis, Horus and Hathor – portrayed next to the pharaoh. lions guarding the entrance to the temple are made of pink granite and were crafted in the Roman style. Initially they were accompanied by two obelisks, but one has been destroyed already in antiquity and the other is in England. One version of an Egyptian myth says that Seth killed his brother because Nephthys' child, Anubis, was conceived by Osiris. Seth cut Osiris' body into 14 pieces and scattered them across the entire Egypt. Isis transformed herself into a huge bird, found all the pieces, sewed them together and wrapped in strips of lining. Then she used powerful magic to bring her brother-husband back to life. Osiris, however, 
couldn't stay in the land of the living and became the king of the afterlife. Before leaving, he assured Isis that she would have a son by the name of Horus, who would defeat Seth, restore order and protect humanity. Not much later, Isis bore a son, nursed him and protected, until he became strong enough to fulfill the prophecy. This myth not only explains why every pharaoh wanted to be perceived as the child of Isis, Horus in life and Osiris after death, but also makes us understand why Isis was so important and held the titles of the mother of all gods, great of magic, mighty healer and protector of the dead. You may now observe just a tiny fraction of hundreds of inscriptions found on the temple walls. It was customary for the pilgrims to leave graffiti on the forecourt or pylon walls. The island features more than 450 examples of the Demotic inscriptions, almost a hundred more than Greek ones. Moreover, we can find here the very last dated Demotic text written in December 452 AD. Demotic script, here's an example, was initially used for legal, commercial, scientific and religious purposes from around 660 BC. It was strongly cursive and always written from right to left. During the Ptolemaic period, its use was extended and regularly carved in stone. Its best known example is to be found on the Rosetta Stone, a key to the decipherment of Egyptian hieroglyphs. The temple also features the very last hieroglyphic inscription, carved in 394 AD. We're now in the forecourt. The second pylon was probably built by Ptolemy VIII, but the pharaoh depicted on both massives is again Ptolemy XII, making offerings to Horus and Isis or Hathor, as at this point in history it's quite difficult to distinguish them. In the southeast corner of the forecourt stands a small, inconspicuous granite altar dedicated to Amun-Ra, which actually is the oldest object on the entire island, raised around 670 BC by Taharqa, a pharaoh of the 25th dynasty of the Kingdom of Kush, also known as the Nubian dynasty. The temple was originally vividly painted, but in 1902 the old, also known as Lo Aswandam, was built and caused the temple complex to be partially submerged underwater. In consequence, all the colors were washed away. This natural 200 kilos granite block was trimmed into a stele in 157 BC. It informs us about the donation of land to the temple, that is, to the priests of Isis. It was commissioned by Ptolemy VI. Considered as the most beautifully adorned in the forecourt is the birth house, also known as the Mamisi. Mamisis were small chapels located in the precinct of the main temple. Very common during the Ptolemaic and Roman periods, they symbolized either the birthplace of the god of the main temple or, if the main god was a female, like Isis here, they were perceived as a place where the goddess bore her offspring. Here in Philae, the rituals of the divine birth, which took place only once a year and in which only kings and high priests could take part, were dedicated to young Horus and symbolized rebirth of the pharaoh.
Let's get inside. We're now in the hypostyle hall which displays superb columns with floral capitals. Presumably they are depicting the first primordial plants. Before the Holy of Holies there are three antechambers with three rather dark rooms featuring wonderful bas-reliefs. In contrast to many other deities, Isis wasn't a distant one, reserved only for priests. The entire Egyptian society, from a slave to a pharaoh, asked her directly for motherly protection, love, childbirth, healing and obviously eternal life. Here's Isis feeding the pharaoh with a small ang, which means that she is, quote, breathing life into him. As worship of Isis continued to spread in the 4th century BC, her temples were erected throughout the Mediterranean world and her role was extended to goddess of the sea, travel and good fortune. Eventually, Isis took on qualities of other goddesses like Greek Demeter, Lebanese Astarte or Egyptian Hathor to finally, during the Roman period, become a universal goddess, having power over gods, cosmos, nature, humanity and death. The Inner Sanctuary on the granite pedestal founded in around 240 BC by Ptolemy III and his wife Berenice originally stood the statue of Isis, which was carried by the priests during the processions that ended on Bigger Island, where Isis could unite with her husband brother Osiris. Here's a rare image of the local patroness of the Nile and goddess of the cataracts, Anuket. I've noticed quite a lot of reliefs depicting pharaohs holding an instrument called sistrum. It was played like a rattle and according to Egyptian beliefs the sound of the instrument calmed the angry gods down. West to the temple are remains of the gateway and vestibule built by the Emperor Hadrian. The more I travel, the more he amazes me. I think it's the fourth country and the tenth site where I see his monument. Just next to the Hadrian's gateway stood the Temple of Harandotis, which means Horus the Avenger of his father. Built by Nero and Claudius, it featured four columns and a platform, but today 
there's almost nothing left as the material was reused in Byzantine churches. Here at Philae, during the Greco-Roman period, the creation myth had undergone a change, and Isis became the goddess of all creation. She crafted the universe, quote, through what her heart conceived and her hands created, unquote. We're now at the northern end of the island. There are remains of the Temple of Augustus, built in 9 BC, and the Triumphal Arch, erected by the Emperor Diocletian. After the short episode of suppression, several decades in the 1st century AD, the cult of Isis eventually reached its peak in the 2nd century AD. In Rome stood the huge temple of Isis and Serapis, the most significant temple outside Egypt dedicated to Egyptian gods. The sanctuaries of Isis or evidence of their existence have been found in Athens, in Pompeii, in Delos, in Paris, in London, and small bronze statuettes of Isis' son and husband were discovered even in Afghanistan and Pakistan. By the way, the River Thames in London even now is known by its alternative name. And yes, you guessed that, it's Isis. Another fun fact states that potentially the very name of the capital of France derives from the Latin quasi parisis, which translates to similar to Isis. The Parisian coat of arms from 1811 displays a ship with goddess Isis at the prow. Interesting, isn't it? On the eastern side of the island we reach a small Ptolemic temple dedicated to Hathor, goddess of love, beauty, music, dancing, fertility and pleasure. If you're interested, I posted a full video about her great temple in Dendera. You can find the link below in the description. This temple is adorned with joyful scenes of musicians and dancers, and among them there are quite a few images of Bess, a dwarf, primarily protector of pregnant women and children, god of fertility, sexuality, humor and war. Before the battle, Egyptian and later Roman soldiers drank from the chalices with Bess's image and wore shields bearing his likeness. Bess was perceived as a fierce warrior fighting of evil, but also as a joyful creature. When an infant or a baby was laughing for no apparent reason, the ancients believed that Bess was the cause. In the 1st century AD, the Apostle Mark arrived in Egypt exactly to Alexandria and according to Coptic tradition, he was the first one to teach about Christianity in Egypt. After initial repressions, the new religion was spreading very fast and in 380 it became the official faith of the Roman Empire. During the 3rd century, the ancient Egyptian religion was pushed west and down south, becoming fragmented and localized. However, the cult of Isis on Philae endured, thanks to a Nubian royalty, the Plymi people, who wanted assurance from Rome that they could worship Isis in the Great Temple and that they had the right to take her statue to Nubia once a year. However, it couldn't last forever. Eventually, between 535 to 537, the temple was closed and the priests expelled or arrested on the order of the Byzantine Emperor, Justinian I. The place hasn't been abandoned, actually quite the contrary, five temples were converted into churches and some more were erected on the northeastern part of the island, hence the whole place is marked with crosses. The event of closing the Temple of Isis is generally agreed as the end of the ancient Egyptian religion, and in 
my opinion, is also a symbolic end of antiquity in Egypt. Would the cult of Isis be a major religion today if it hadn't been superseded by Christianity? I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, you'll also like my videos from Turkey and Greece. Links in the description. Still exploring Egypt, so if you want to stay up to date with new episodes, please subscribe to my channel. And see you on another ancient site!